Sunday is the blessing of the quilts. They'll be displayed because they're going to be shipped out following. Okay. Um, any other announcements, questions, or anything for the good of the order that I have not mentioned? Going once, going twice, we are done. <laughs> Well, welcome. Here we are at our church, and we get to worship our Lord and Savior on this beautiful day. So let us start off by singing a beautiful song to him.
please rise for our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you with your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. In the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song this morning is a favorite, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you waken, waken, wake from the death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Cassius and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Christ Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you as well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay my life down for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. There will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, not because I lay my life down that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now please join with me to confess our common faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten as Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll continue on to our sermon now.
basic car maintenance and repair. And his plan was to personally teach me everything I needed to know. And so he started off with something pretty easy, changing a tire. And actually, it was easy. And indeed, it turned out to be a very good thing that he taught me because one time when traveling back to college during winter break, I blew a tire. And it was at night and I had no light. So I had to change a tire in the pitch black darkness. And to this day, I still have just a little bit of pride that I can change a tire without seeing it. I also had to change my oil. And he worked with me the first time step by step. And other than getting messy, which back in those days was part of the fun, I figured it out. And from that point on, I was responsible for checking my oil and replacing it as necessary. So far, his plan was going according to the plan. But then, I told him my car was handling kind of funny, and so he told me to check the power steering fluid, which turned out to be low. So he told me to go to the store and exactly what kind of fluid to buy, and I went out and got some. And then he told me to put it into the car, but he didn't show me precisely where it meant. I figured he figured it was idiot proof. Some of you might see where this is going. So I guess I didn't look at the engine carefully or I figured one hole in an engine is just as good as any other hole in the engine and so I poured the power steering fluid into it. And I went and I told him I was finished and he came back to check it only to discover I put the power steering fluid where the oil goes. After that, his plan of teaching me basic car and repair fell by the wayside. Yet, just because I was less than adept at car repair doesn't mean that we should fail to have a plan for our lives. As the saying goes, fail to, fail to plan, plan to fail. And the book of 1 John gives us many plans, and given that, in large part, that whole book was written as a form of damage control, it makes sense that some of those plans are going to help us be able to better fight our enemies. And in the part that we read this morning, John makes it personal by revealing what we, as individuals, must do, and perhaps even more importantly, what has already been done for us. John starts us off with the main reason behind everything that he wrote and will soon command us to do. By this we know love, that he laid his life down for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers. Now, note the very beginning part sets up the rest of us. By this we know love. And note the word, know. While doubts may plague us from time to time, they don't have to, because we can know the love of God. That is, we can be as certain about our faith as we can about anything else. Many people in our culture say that we can only be certain about things that we can prove physically or scientifically. But that's simply not true. If nothing else, that claim itself cannot be proven physically or scientifically. Having certainty about spiritual matters is just as logical and right as being certain about other matters. But that's just the intro. On to the deep stuff. Love. Maybe more than anything else in our culture, love is both the most valued and the most misunderstood. Although, to be fair, given that Jesus spoke at great length about love, and John here is continuing to expand upon it, maybe love has always been both intensely desired and tra tragically confused. Indeed, what is love? If we go by the biblical definition of love, we have what John wrote here. He, that is Jesus, laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for the brothers. But of course, John wasn't really imparting any new information because Jesus had previously said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay his life down for his friends. 
So, according to Jesus and John, it seems true love is proven by sacrifice. So that would necessarily seem to mean that without sacrifice, all other claims of love are just empty words. And right away, we can see something. Living according to God's plan will require much from us. Like Jesus said, any one of 